So it's a nice, <laughs> it's a nice size parking lot. That is big. So, yeah, the it, building it's, itself, the building itself is like, a, I think it's a fifteen unit building. So, well, I guess someone could get hurt there. Maybe I don't know. Well, I mean, it, it, one of the things I had said to her was, if you're, if you're driving in the street, do you not look for kids? Men, women, human beings, walking, pedestrians, so that you don't have an issue or maybe an accident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, absolutely I do. I said, so if that's the case, why when you're driving in the parking lot, would you not look for those same pedestrians that you look for in the street where there's a lot less? I mean, I, I just didn't feel good as management yeah. going to call a tenant and saying, remove your kids from a parking lot that's predominantly empty with the exception of a few cars. And the cars that are there right now are leaving, entering and leaving a lot less, obvious for obvious issues and reasons, right? People aren't leaving their apartment to go to work or to go pick up food and on a daily basis. Uh, I don't know, I just- That's movement, that's movement. Maybe she just says, this is, this is my property, or oh, I live here, they, they don't belong on my, on my property. Well, I think one of the biggest issues we have with tenants is that um, they feel that because they pay rent for a space in the building, they have the right to utilize any space in the building. You know, I think mm. tenants really need to realize that the space they're occupying is within the, the confines of the walls of the apartment. Mm -hmm. However, the other <clears throat> space is, is common space. Even the parking lot. The, the parking lot is common space as well, but... I mean, when we do our parking lots, we don't actually charge tenants to park in the parking lot. What I'm we do is we basically write it in the lease that they have the right to park in the parking lot, but we're not charging them for it. And the reason we write it up that way is because if we have to remove, if there's a major issue with tenants in, the, in these parking lots, which we've had in the past, they, yeah. they like to give us calls and say, hey, uh, apartment two is parking in my unit, my space in apartment four. We, every space is numbered. Uh, you know? And if they can't figure it all out, so my my answer to them is very simple: if you can't, we're not, we don't, we don't collect enough money to police the parking lot. So if you guys cannot respect each other enough to police it yourself with with just respect, well then we'll fix the problem. We just cone it off. We put the pilings in, and there's no parking lot. Now you go park on the street because you couldn't you couldn't act like adults and park in the parking lot. So if you a lot of times wow. they'll so there'll be an argument in the building and then what they do is just to piss <laughs> each other off, they do that. But then they call me, so I say I'll fix the problem. I'll just close it off and there's no more parking lot. Now you have no more problem. So the that street, is true. The street that is, is common space, right? So it's if someone down. comes and takes your spot that you parked in yesterday in the street, what do you do? Nothing. You go look for another spot, right? That's what happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it's crazy. Just it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you another story I, we did. They, uh, we had a laundry mat inside the building. It's a, it was a six dryers and six washing machines. Everything was working out great, no problem. Apparently, someone was mad at somebody, and they went in there and they they drilled out the um, the mechanism to put the, to put the coins in. Damn. All, all of them, and they stole the money. So wow, was, overnight did it do that? This was probably within a week span because all we right. would go there and take the money out weekly. So it was it was more of a nuisance to tell you the truth to to have it there, but it was. Uh, something for the for the tenants, you know, it was mm -hmm. make it easier for them. So said, okay, well, we're not going to. It was going to cost us about four thousand dollars to to make the repairs. Mm -hmm. So I says to my partner, who's my brother, as you know, well, why don't we just close the laundromat? Why don't we just close it? We're not making any serious money anyway. This is just to accommodate the tenants. Mm -hmm. So we <clears> said, <throat> you know what? That's what we're going to do. We closed it. The Damn. tenants went berserk. <laughs> I called every single one, and prior to closing it, I asked them, do you know who did this? I don't know. Have you used it? No, I haven't used it. So you've been using this for the last five years, but right now you haven't used it over the last week? <laughs> no, 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 no. no one knows anything. So since no one knows Not anything, it. I said, well, you know what? They said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. 
I said, and they said, well, you have to know. I said, why do I have to know what you don't? And you, and you live there. Uh -huh. So we just shut it down. Then they, they complained about it. We left it like that for about two years. And now that we opened it up again, never a problem again. Ah, <laughs> uh, you sent the message. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and, and, and the, the parking lot one was just, was just recent. That was yesterday's. But the, the laundromat was a while ago. But I mean, this coronavirus is just, um, yeah, it's, it's with hard that. with, with uh, repairs. I mean, Let's I, I handle. I handle, most of the, uh, yeah, I handle most of the stuff. Um, <laughs> I handle all of the Florida and New Jersey properties. Mm -hmm. so I handle a lot. I, I basically do uh, management for that. And I handle, yeah. I work with a lot of the contractors. And as we were saying prior to getting on, I mean, the, one of the biggest problems I have right now is getting a contractor that's A, willing to get there, B, mm -hmm. has the ability to get there, and C, if they even want to go because it's just – they want to. They want to know every question, every <laughs> answer, every time. Are they married? How many kids they have? How long have they been there? What What's their occupation? Do they go to work? Do they leave? I'm like, wow. I mean, I get it, but uh, but it's a little. It's it's crazy. It's a bit much. I don't want to go there. Let me rewind, Dave. So much that I could talk to you about. I could just hang out with you all day. Round up with uh, you're you're hanging out with us today because I wanted you. I was talking to Dave yesterday. <clears throat> You probably remember his brother came on several times in the past. Never got an opportunity to hang out with Dave. He's so busy. These guys are managing over 300 doors from New York, Jersey, Florida. <clears throat> but the, the market is changing. And Dave told me some amazing story yesterday about some things that he has is seeing on some of his closings. So we're going to cover that. Dave's full-time real estate investor. You've been in the business since 1989. When? 89. Ooh. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> I was 17. You can write a book. Please tell me y'all going to get together. And get a book and we, keep, we keep talking about it. We keep talking about it. Maybe uh, maybe we'll do that one day. Maybe I could help put that together for y'all, man. That would be really cool. I do like I a Napoleon Hill. I just follow you around. And, just... <laughs> <clears throat> like and, we, and like, likewise, we would do the same <laughs> for you. <laughs> You're talking about tenants. Do you think which one is harder to keep happy? All your tenants or uh, the one, one being married to one person, uh, one wife, Dave? You think oh which one God. you think is harder? I, I, I get well, first of all, I would never have another wife. I just know I watch those TV shows with guy has four wives. I said, Why would you do that? <laughs> that is way too much work. <laughs> but so uh, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, I live with my wife, I don't live with my tenants. So I think that's most important for me is to keep her happy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there for you. Round up. Which one's harder? A million tenants or one wife? Which that one is that is uh you know, ten I would th you think about it. So tenants you, you have, they have a problem and you have the solution. It's yeah. not so, so emotional. Does the wife. Yeah, but so yes, good. but it, it's not as emotional, right? The, the sink is leaking, I send the plumber. <laughs> My wife has a problem. I got to figure it out. But it's it's a lot of there's a there's a whole lot of wiring involved in that. <laughs> you still got to be doing this though. Oh like, yeah, there's a lot of wiring. It's it's uh, there's a lot wiring. of intermingling wiring. That's uh, that's that's there's a lot of shorts in the wires sometimes. You know, <laughs> so you know you got to there's a lot of uh, a lot of work involved. Roundup, we're, we're going to start off very quickly. And don't forget my YouTube and Internet Marketing Mastermind. We will be starting tomorrow, 4.30. We're starting with that with the Mastermind. So get registered up in the video description below. <clears throat> giving you a huge value for this. It's going to be an eight-week training. We're going to meet once a week, how we get paid, how we blow up a YouTube channel and get paid on the Internet. Dave, you had a closing recently uh, amongst a million other things that you're doing. And I want to get to the contractor aspect of it, too, during this coronavirus thing. Give me the snapshot of what you saw that was just so unique to this situation that we're in with the economic downturn. <laughs> oh, it's um, so I was working with a client and uh, they literally at the table, it was an investment property and uh, there was, it was private money being lended. Uh, originally they said that they would come up with 85% of the project, which also included the renovation aspect of it. The, the uh, lender. The lender. Okay. Uh, so money was funded to the title company in escrow uh, in escrow 
from the bank. Okay. Uh, so with a picture, paint the picture for me. Everybody. We we do the whole walkthrough. <coughs> the house is done. Uh, rather, the deal is done. All of inspections. We've we're past all of that. Appraisals. Everything is done. We're literally on our way to the closing. Okay. Title company calls. Okay, we're funded. Great. Are you going to closing? Yes. On our way. At the table, attorney comes in and says, title company refuses to fund because the private lender has redone their numbers and they're uncomfortable with the market. And they they will not fund it. They did not allow the title company to, to fund the deal. Wow. At the table. Oh, my Lord. Dude. Yeah. <clears throat> So that was not uh, easy. I mean, he the, the the buyer actually even came up with another fifteen percent, and they still would not fund it. So they tell still- me, okay, so walk me through this. So we're at the table. Are you with the buyers or the sellers, Dave? You're, are you representing somebody? I'm, ba- I'm basically with the buyer. Um, okay, so you. So I'm working with the buyer, and the buyer. I we're basically trying to come up with a scenario that will make the bank because it is private money. It is private money, so it's not like a national bank. So we're able to speak to the investor himself um, or the group of investors. And what are they saying, Dave? They're basically saying that they're not comfortable with the market. I mean, it was a big house. It's the the, the house itself was five hundred and fifty thousand dollar purchase with uh with an exit strategy of about nine hundred, I'm sorry, seven hundred and ninety-five thousand. It was gonna be about a hundred and forty thousand dollar renovation. So the, the the numbers were extremely tight already. That is tight, Dave. So with that being said. <clears throat> The the investor just said they're not comfortable even with an, even with the uh, the buyer coming up with thirty percent. They they, they asked they asked him for fifty percent in order to fifty percent to close it, and the buyer just didn't have it. But that's that's one mm-hmm. of the things that uh, I mean that's a that's a that was a big transaction as well. So I mean most of these flips aren't that big, maybe two uh, fifties three hundred. Yeah. You know, the initial investment for this one was five hundred and fifty on its own. Well, I'm thinking five hundred and fifty. That means the lender is only putting up four at eighty five percent. Well, they're putting up eighty five percent of the whole project, which was going to be seven hundred thousand. Oh, okay. What was the ARV on this one, Dave? Eight hundred. Eight hundred. So they want them to put up eighty five percent of eight hundred. Correct. So, so that, that should be. Let's see. <clears throat> you see, Dave has his calculator at eight. <laughs> so he's putting up six hundred eighty thousand dollars. So they wouldn't even be comfortable at thirty percent, Dave. They were not comfortable at thirty. Well, I mean, Let's you have see. to remember with a market like this, what's the first? Pro- what's the, what are the first areas to get hit the hardest? It's the high end. Oh. The high, the high, those are, those are, you know, those are high end homes. Anything over, I mean, where we are over here, anything over $500,000 is a high end home. You know, those high end homes are just getting hit really hard. Tell me about the product, Dave, <clears throat> the house itself. The house itself was 3,500 square feet. Um, very nice house, although it was a foreclosure. Uh, this particular investor was going, he was, in my opinion, over-investing it, uh, removing and remodeling things that p- probably didn't need it. Uh, mm-hmm. However, the biggest uh, hit for him was going to be the septic. So this particular That's home did have a, yeah, it had a septic, but that <coughs> septic, uh, to do, to to remove the septic in today's standards in the particular area that it's in, which is Monmouth County in New Jersey, uh, that septic was thirty thousand dollar replacement. It ain't um, cheap. Yeah. So, on top of that, he also had a well issue uh, that was going to be another ten thousand. So he was forty thousand into the dirt before he even did any type of renovation. So, and that's if everything goes smooth, correct? I mean, just because they well, that's say if everything goes smooth, exactly. Well, I mean, we're actually with the with the septic, that would have been his worst case scenario. His best case oh, would have been twenty five thousand. I mean, but, but they can leave. They can. I've seen them crumble. You know, I've seen them. You start messing with them, and then they just collapse. I mean, yeah, you, you well, don't. It's you just never know until you get into it. God, you know? they, they, yeah. Yeah. So just, he walked away from that one. 
the uh, the buyer or the oh both both people. both i mean the buyer couldn't couldn't get the money to fund it and the and the investor wouldn't wouldn't fund it didn't feel comfortable funding it this is crazy dave i'm thinking uh you've been doing this long enough longer than me twice as long as me and i'm like uh do you understand this or would what were you thinking was this this had to be on your mind i mean you had to have had some type of premonition to forecast something like this right well i mean we 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 looked at the that particular home my brother and i both looked at it to purchase it ourselves but we did not feel comfortable buying it why not um, <clears throat> we thought the numbers were too tight it's just gotcha. even even prior to this we looked at this home okay. Okay. and but for some people uh i guess they value their time differently um mm -hmm. And they sometimes people want to get into the de into the deal, just to learn the, the aspect of the project itself and how they're done. So therefore, mm -hmm. they don't they probably don't need to make the outcome that we look for, mm -hmm. um, as far as you know monetary is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you you pay to learn, right? So if you get if you've never done a flip, and you get into it and you made if you broke let's call it you break it even because if you make ten thousand dollars that's a break even. So yeah. if you if you break even, you still have you still have gained the knowledge, which Education. is valuable, right? So that's true. You know, so I think that's why we're dealing with so many people right now in the market that are overpaying for homes because it's the very beginning stages for them. So Maybe. they're just looking at it as a learning <clears throat> skill. You know, there's another aspect where people are just literally paying us to teach them. The business, and basically, we get portions of the pro uh, portion of the uh, the profit itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we get paid to be on the job site, and we we walk them through the whole project. And, gotcha. and we're not we're not actually doing that. That's a lot of the times what we do is if we don't take a deal, people are always calling us for deals. We'll say, hey, look, this is a deal that won't work for us, but if you're looking to do your first deal, you know, you'll make some money. And we'll walk you through it. So between the money that we make for profits and everything else in between, we end up doing okay. I see. So you thought this one was to even purchase price was what five fifty? You said that was five fifty, worth eight. So even with two eight eight five six seven with three hundred in it round up, I want everybody to know that people think you know, Dave, you and I kind of have a <clears throat> a barometer for this a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's just nothing. I mean, especially when you're talking about high end houses, you you got three hundred in it, and it's still nothing. I mean, it's just uh, like, <laughs> well, <laughs> you wouldn't well, even touch it. Well, you, you know, know what? what? It's so funny. You put it that way, and it sounds like I, I, you have to remember. It's uh, when we look at it, we work on numbers backwards, right? <clears throat> so if we could sell it for this, we work on numbers. In reverse to see what we have to buy it for. Our number to buy that house was five hundred. For five hundred, we would have bought it. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have had to deal with any lenders, so we wouldn't have had any issues. But so one another money is low. Then what was that? Your cost of your money is low. If well, if yes, exactly. But one of the major That's aspects of, of why we did not touch that house, and uh, we went over this multiple times. Because this house came back and forth, it's in a phenomenal location of uh, Manalapan County, uh, Manalapan Township. <clears throat> but uh, one of the main reasons we did not see it is because our forecasting of where the market was going. And you saw this? Well, no. This this is no. There's no way anybody saw this. This is we just understood that the, the with the stock market being where it was and real estate traveling where it has been for the last eleven years. It's inevitable, right? No way up. It, it's just, it's inevitable. Anything <laughs> could happen. And one of the main reasons we didn't touch this one <clears throat> was because the fact that we were concerned that if the market even took a little dip, and to be honest with you, the real estate market really hasn't been as, as impacted as the stock market. Yeah. As of yet. Uh, yeah. But as you know, things follow suit. So uh, we, we were more weary about that aspect of it. You know, having that much money tied into one project where if there's any dip in the market, that's the first. So, you know, the three four hundred thousand dollars houses, you know, they get a dip. It feels like this. Mm -hmm. An eight hundred thousand dollar gets a small dip and it feels like this. 
Yeah, I'm now, thinking five percent times eight hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, even sometimes ten. So it's you know eighty thousand. Right. Yeah. So the hundred thousand dollars that sounds great, you know, after you pay for your realtors to come in and out, your closing costs in and out. I don't know if the money's really there. So that's the main reason why we didn't touch it. But at five hundred, we would have bought it. I see. Because now see. there's more room for leeway. So there's there's room for the mistakes. Or for the corrections of the market. Corrections of the market and mistakes. Round up, if you're just joining us, hanging out with Dave Barrero, real estate investor since 1989, just going over some of the problems that he's facing with this coronavirus hitting, dealing with lenders, literally backing out of deals at the closing table and some other stuff we'll talk about. Wow, that is a... Yeah, that was was, was tough. My stomach. I'm thinking about my stomach. Were you driving there, Dave, or were you on the way? No, we were... were we were literally at the attorney's office at the table, just sitting and waiting for the attorney to come in to, you know, finalize the transaction. We you know, were sitting there just chatting. Had the seller already closed, <laughs> Dave? <clears throat> no doubt the seller no, already. No. So, the, so the, the, everybody was there. So the representative was there. Everybody was at the table. Both, both sides. Both sides. <laughs> did you talk to the seller or y'all don't really communicate? Did you talk to the no, who did no, you talk no. We did not we did not talk to the seller because the seller was a bank. Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. Well they don't they're not gonna feel it that bad. Yeah, they they it's a yeah, they, this was a foreclosure. They still had an agent though. Oh yeah. Well the agent, I'd be honest with you, I was relieved for the buyer as, as upset as he was. I was I was saying it myself, I'm like, you realize how much money they might have just saved you? Saved you, yeah. <laughs> That's true. You know what I mean? Because I I'm looking at it as an investor. Mm-hmm. Like, if these guys that are are invest, you know, investing into this project see it, and this is what they do every day, you as an individual that has only done this twice, they obviously mm-hmm. have their eyes open wide. Nice. The investors that are funding this project for you. A lot broader. If they see it and you don't, you might want to say thank you. <laughs> That's a good point, Dave. Roundup, get your questions in from a 1989 real estate veteran. The man knows what he's talking about. These, these are the people that I call when I have an issue. I want to know if they, they, they can predict. It's crazy how you forecasted that. I know you listened to Bet David, too, and he kept oh, saying yeah. about that long. It's been such a long yeah, such a long time it's, since we had a recorrection. <laughs> you know, my, my brother and I, have, I mean, I'm sure he's probably said this to you on, on your cast once or twice before, but... <laughs> We've been we've been hoarding a little bit, just waiting because it's like it's inventory is so low, market mm-hmm. is so high, you know, uh, rates are low. It's uh, we just couldn't see. Uh, we used to buy literally 150 units a year mm-hmm. and buy them and flip them. Mm-hmm. And as inventory went so low, we ended up just holding and now hoarding to rent. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we could. It's We've been hoarding money. <laughs> By the city. <laughs> just just to, you know, on anticipation, Ready. but that hurts as well, right? It hurts you. Now you have right. money making no money. That's so That's you're, a bad you're, deal. you're it's you're you never, you know, it's weird. I wonder when did when does a man say, you know what, I, got, I want my money working? And when do we come to the realization that we have to get the money working and it's a bad thing to have capital sitting around, you know? No. Just different walks of life, you know. Oh, it's it's. Well, some people would say, well, well, that's good. So you have you have it waiting, and I'm like, yeah, but it's bad because while well, it's waiting, it's it's not making losing any money. value. It's losing value. <laughs> Depreciation, paper, <laughs> depreciating, right? Yeah, it's it, it's, it's sitting. Uh, bad some thing. people, oh, you have money in the bank. I'm like, I hope not. <laughs> you know. Business, man. I love I love the way you think, Dave. But you know, it's weird. When I sell a house, I'm going to get a big check, right? I'm like, generally, the society, including my wife, was like, yeah, we got a big old payday. I'm like, to me, it's just putting me to work. Yeah. It's just another exactly. place to have to put the, I'm like, you don't, they don't even, I mean, I try to it's get another, it to the, the, the check isn't even in the bank, and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to spend it. Where is it going? <laughs> You can't spend it, right? You're going. No, you're not going to spend it. You know, it's not. It's not. We don't have the uh, nine to five job where you get paid and you get you keep getting paid. Like, you know, you take that money, you go buy a car. Now, how much money did you lose besides the depreciation of the car? 
itself. Mm-hmm. But how much money did you lose because you don't have that money to go make money? You know, it's when like, did you from a roundup? It's help us uh, open up our minds, Dave. When did you cross cross that? Because we're not born like that, and we don't start out like that. We're all, you know, I, I, I speak for me. I started out, got a big check. I'm, you know, it's party time. Yeah. As a younger uh, man, when did you cross that? <clears throat> You know, I don't know. It's uh, digging the crates. Uh, it's uh, I've been. Uh, we we come from an entrepreneurial mindset, you know, from my father, and uh, my father always said, "You got to pay yourself." You know, uh, I probably told you this story. He 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 gave me a hundred dollars. I used to work in his deli on the weekends, so he says, "All right, I'm going to pay you a hundred bucks," and he paid me a hundred dollars for two weeks straight. Then all of a sudden he stopped paying me, and I said, "Dad, you didn't you didn't pay me for the last two weeks." He goes, "Well, I gave you two hundred already. How much you got?" I was like, uh, "I got like twenty five bucks." Oh man! He's like, "He's like, yeah, you don't need the. That's why I'm not paying you." I said, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "Did you pay yourself?" I said, "What? Why would I pay myself? You paid me." He goes, "That's the problem." So I said, "All right." He so he said, "I'm going to pay you again. We'll see what happens." Two weeks later, he asked me how much you have. I said, I have 190 bucks. He said, so he goes, so what'd you do with the rest of the money? I was like, it's only $10. He's like, right. But if you can save 190 now, why didn't you save 190 before? Holy cow. <laughs> so since then, I think that was my first mindset. I, I must have been like 12 years old. Mm-hmm. And since then, I've always, I don't know. I just always lived beneath my means. And um, wow, just save. Saving is you know, there's a key to opportunity, right? Some people would say, oh, uh, another story is my friends who used to go to Cancun. This is when I was 17. <clears throat> it was cheap. It was only like 700 bucks for the whole week, all included flight and everything. Nice. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And they're like, well, we got to save for it. And I was like, well, how long is it going to take you? They're like four weeks. And I'm like, so in four weeks, you could save 700 bucks. What the hell did you do for the last two years? <laughs> <laughs> You've been working the same job for two years, dude. What'd you do with all that money? <laughs> it's a skill, though, Dave. I look at my, on my savings. I'm like, we're ready to buy. I'm like, we are ready. Oh, my and God. I, my brother and I, we talk about it every day. You know, it's, but you know what? This this market's a moving target. So you don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just That's don't know. Yeah. So I'm telling my roundupers, man, you've got to get this internet under control. You got to learn this internet, bro. You got to learn this YouTube thing. Well, so, YouTube and Zoom and everything else. I mean, you, Zoom's, Zoom stocks going like this and everyone else is going like this. <laughs> Dave, I have to remind myself whenever something's going down, I, it's like I had a beat in my head. Somebody's always going up. Well, I mean, right? Well, let me ask you. Is that how it works? Is that what, what been your experience? Well, you know, you know, again, my brother and I just talked, talked last night, you know, like, what are we doing? How do we captivate the new skills of today's market? Right, you got to con- continuously evolve, and That's you know, right, I we we kind of go back to our grassroots from the beginning and take it from there, and then look at where that was, and look at where we are today, and, and look for the in between. Um, mm. It's tough. It's it's tough, but that's also a skill to see it. Be able to recognize it. You have to recognize what's what's happening and Zoom. I know you talk about it all the time, and uh, Zoom is like that's it's the hottest thing. Man, their <laughs> stock is boom. I'm like, there it is. I'm looking for. I'm looking through the market, right, trying to see who's coming up, who's coming up. Bam, you can yeah. see it going. You know, it's, it's just, just, just it's, straight increase. You know, unreal. level. You know, but it's it's but that is today's market. I mean, you've been doing this for how long? You know, you using the technology, uh, yeah. whether it's Zoom or not, it's the same back end technology that you're utilizing. There you go, brother. Yeah. So, Dave, tell me about you. As we were talking about our tenants <clears throat> coming on, I haven't had a problem. Um, my rents are coming in slowly but surely. It's the first of the month. You said about re- your one of your biggest problems now is doing repairs. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we don't have so many issues with the payments as of yet, but uh, it is the first of the month, so we'll start seeing that more, more or less, very soon. Yeah. Um, Spe- you in so- trouble too up there. You, I mean, you got no doubt. You got the laws up there. And on another another congressional order on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's getting uh we're in New York and New Jersey, so which are the two hardest hit in uh the US right now. So uh 
you know, they're, they're, they're clamping down, but things are good. Uh, you know, this, this is the time to uh, regenerate yourself and, um, and, and just figure out, you know, how do I make myself better? I mean, you think about it, everyone is pretty much status quo. Even the people that were skyrocketing before have slowed down to some magnitude or another, right? Whether they like it or not. Um, and, you know, some people are being forced to learn a new skill and some people are choosing to learn a new skill. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, skills, ha hands-on skills, um, they're getting paid right now, you know, because those are the ones like, <laughs> that, as, as you know, you, you do this every day. I mean, plumbers, uh, you know, I, I have, I have a, right now a call in yesterday, uh, garbage disposal is leaking. Okay. Um, she can't do the dishes in the sink and she can't do the dishes in the dishwasher because when the water ejects, it comes out of the garbage disposal regardless. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I told her, you know, put a pot down there and I'll see what I could do. But I did get a plumber to go out. Some, he's going to go out at five 30 tonight. Um, how was that? Tell me about this. I know you said something about inspectors or city municipalities maybe not want people out or yeah so the cops um are literally stopping people this is in florida we have properties in uh osceola county um <laughs> kissimmee orange county uh, seminole county uh so they're literally stopping workers and saying you know do you have a work order to where you're going and what's the reason like a and, permit well it'll be like a work order stating the property, the problem, location. You, you could give that's something that you would you would generate. Yeah, for. we generate that uh, from the office, gotcha. and we give it to them. Wow. That way, if they do get stopped, they can. And uh, we've even gotten called to verify to verify that's where they're going. Wow, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Something. So a lot of these, a lot of the contractors don't want to go out because, depending on the the police officer, and they can send them home. They can give them a fine. So they just. Uh, I haven't really heard anyone getting a fine, but. Uh, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. They they kind of just send them home. Anything's possible. I mean, it is is that time right now. But at the same time, I don't want my tenants are used to, you know, within twenty four hours having a resolution to whatever the problem is. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously to the magnitude of what it might be. Uh, but you know, when there's a leak, as you know, water is the the hardest. The the first thing you want to fix. It's yeah. the hardest problem to to fix if you in the long term, you know. The longer it leaks, the more problems you have, the more it costs. So that's that's one of the things we like to get done ASAP. But uh, it's just really difficult. I have, you know, I get the call from the tenant. I had I already know what the plumber's gonna or the contractor's gonna ask me. How many people in the apartment? When was the last time they left? Um, are they have any uh, ailments or symptoms? Then I call the plumber. He asks me those questions. I give him the questions. He may have additional questions I have to call. Then he would, this particular plumber requests all windows to be open, all screens to be taken out so that yeah. airflow comes into the apartment. He wants it sanitized before, and then the tenant wants it sanitized before he leaves. And the, and the tenant cannot be home. So there's a whole strategy wow. of what's, tra what's going on prior to anyone coming in. Yeah. Goodness, Dave, you're talking about something serious. So the sanitizing, who would you get to do that? I mean, would the tenant so do that? So the tenant, the tenant herself or himself would uh, sanitize prior. Gotcha. <clears throat> if they do not have uh, the items to do it, the plumber would bring it with him. They, mm -hmm. he, they would sanitize, then they would leave, and then gotcha. the plumber will sanitize afterwards, or the contractor mm -hmm. would sanitize after they leave as well. I mean, you know, in Florida, we're dealing with uh, a lot of AC issues. Okay, right. right now, it's, like, is it hot down there? No, I don't know. It, it is. It is hotter. Yeah. Um, gotcha. So during the day, it's hot. Depending if they're on a third floor, second floor, first floor. So okay. third floor units, they're in the one particular complex that we own a majority of properties in there. Uh, there are third floor units that will heat up. So gotcha. you know they want their AC on. I have one lady that's uh, she's been without AC for two days. Okay. But you know uh -huh. they are going today. But it's really tough because every every stop takes twice as long. Everybody's it's not like so they're dirty. just well, yeah. I mean, they're not they're not just walking in and, and fixing, right? They're walking uh -huh. in, they're fixing. Sometimes they have to leave to go get a part. When they come back, 
They have to re-sanitize because now they left the area and they have to come back again and they have to sanitize and then before they leave, they sanitize. So yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's not it's not uh, you know every day is normal. So if, if, if a contractor could have done maybe six, seven, eight service calls in a day, now he's probably doing three to four, mm -hmm. just because of the time frame. Now, are your guys are these like guys that are on staff on your your repair guys or are these private contractors ten ninety nine guys? What type of guys do you usually have doing your repairs? Uh, these are all ten ninety nine guys. Um, <laughs> uh, even our uh, handyman that we use there, they're all ten ninety nines. Gotcha. Uh, we don't we don't keep we don't keep anybody really on staff for that type yeah. of uh, work. Gotcha. Um, but. Yeah, I mean it's 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 just not easy over here in New Jersey. I just got a call for uh, a heating mm -hmm. um, for a unit that's on the water. Um, I called you the get it. well, I call I call the HVAC company and they said the quickest we can get out there is sometime tomorrow. Okay, where, where when you're on the water, you have the breeze and it's 47 degrees, and you get several yeah. calls. I have to say, I mean, I'm uh, I'm doing the best I can do with Nothing with what do. we're dealing with. You know, put an extra sweater on. I don't know what to tell you. Go sleep in your car for a day. <laughs> yeah, I, wow. I don't want to seem insensitive, or you know, I'm, we're we're compassionate to to what the issues are that they have. But at the same time, as tenants, they have to realize that we're we're up against you know the wall yeah, as well. Goliath, Goliath, yeah. yeah. This know, is a Goliath, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt, this is uh, the unexpected Goliath. Yeah. Roundup, thanks for joining us. Dave Barrero, you are, what, what are, you, are you in Jersey today? I am in Jersey, yes. I'm in my home office. Nice. Let's yeah. see. Um, uh, thank you for sharing, Dave. I've had you on here for 40 minutes already. Time goes by so fast. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, it's always great in. speaking to you. I see that I was listening to your your cast yesterday on that YouTube. That's, uh, that's going to be huge for you. Dave, man, I just I've I, I've been sleeping in, in a bed at night. Like, what am I gonna do? I can't keep preaching real estate. I mean, obviously we do real estate, but yeah, we all do. That's where it all generates from. Yes, but my <laughs> conscience won't tell me. I, my conscience won't say get into real estate now. I think you should, but I mean, we don't know if it, yeah, I mean, you, you, you call. There you go. Say that again. Cautiously, yeah, you have to be cautious. On you know. What you think is a great deal may not actually be a great deal, you know. Tomorrow, yeah, it might it's, not be. Uh, it, I don't know. I mean, it, unless it's a fun. Uh oh, lost you, Dave. Round up, get your Q and A in. Sign up for my. There, we'll get him back. <sighs> my spirit is just telling me to train you on the YouTube internet marketing. Get signed up. Go ahead and get joined up. Round up. I'm starting tomorrow, four thirty. If you, this is the first wave I'm going to do with this YouTube and internet marketing thing. I promise you the next time it's going to be five times more expensive. It's going to be at least five times more as expensive. Now I'm just kind of putting everything together. I want to make sure that the first people get the most value. I'm charging 600 bucks. So, and this is going to show you how to get paid 24 hours a day. Let's see where Dave is. The internet is booming. Everybody's at home doing like doing just like this, watching YouTube, watching Hulu or whatever they're watching. So get signed up, round up below my YouTube and internet marketing ma uh, mastermind. We're going to start tomorrow. All of us will be right here in the chat room. I'll collect your email address, send you a Zoom, and we'll all go over different businesses that you have, different strategies. You can see my mastermind. And I need your questionnaires. Make sure you email them back to me. Hold on. Let me see what Dave is. Click back on. Get your questions in for Dave, too. Uh, click back on. Sorry about that. I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah, that was something. Dragon, what up? Yeah, this that loan recall was something, right, bro? Minimum 40000 Yeah, that, that is something. We'll get it back on. Round up. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Dave Barrero. These guys own over 300 doors. They're there who I call him and his brother. We talk about business all the time, internet stuff, real estate, tenants, marketing, how to do repairs. And I want to know what are they saying since they've been doing this business since 1989? What are they saying about what's going on now? They've seen a lot more than me. He must have lost his... Uh... Let 
lost his connection there. Way that day. Uh, get your questions in, round uppers. Two years not making money. Where's he at? Hold tight, round up. I'll get him back on here. Server area. Era. Oh, Lord. What's going on? Can y'all still see me? Can y'all still see me here, round uppers? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Hold tight. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, we've got a little technical difficulties. We'll get Dave back on in a minute, see what happened to him. Get your questions in. Dave. Yes, sir. It's not letting me on. It says something wrong with the server. Yeah, go to... You got a different... Copy the link and go to a different, like, uh, Explorer or Chrome or something. I mean, go to a different browser. Okay, let me... Uh, okay, I'll go to a different browser. Okay. Uh, Roundup, we'll get them back on here. Sorry about that. This is cool. Thanks for hanging out with us as we got 70 people on here. I'm just honored you guys are letting me serve. I'm honored. Nee Huff, my friend had a house under contract week before the coronavirus. A week later, the buyer attorney disappeared. She has to start over. Wow, this is something, y'all. I'm just, uh, this is once again, I love real estate. I do it every day. I own a bunch of it. I flip, build. But my spirit is not, uh, there's always, my mentor used to say, Chris, there's a time to buy and a time to sell and a time to hold. So at this point right here, I want you doing no money down stuff. You just got to change your strategy a little bit, but we don't even know what the values are going to be in 30 days. So if you think you're going to go out there and get into a flip right now, you just don't know what's going on. I mean, we, we don't know where the market is going. So I'm getting my experts on here to tell you that. Matter of fact, I've got another lender coming on later today tell you about what loan programs are changing for owner occupants for uh, people that we're selling to at retail. So we can get Dave on here. So this lender is a, he's been, he does, he's a mortgage broker and he's going to, uh, he emailed me yesterday talking about so many regulations that are changing and we got to re be reminded that yes, we can buy with private money, but we have to get out of the, get out of them somehow. Go ahead, Dave. Oh man, this is weird. Never had this happen before. Okay, well, it's happening. So let me see. Let me try. Let me copy it again. If I send you the same link, no doubt the same thing is going to happen, you're thinking. Yeah, well, maybe the... This is... Yep, that's very fine. Let me see. Here, I'm going to send you another email. Try, try that one out, Dave. See if that has anything. I just emailed you another link. If this doesn't work, Dave, do you have your cell phone? You can click on it on your cell phone. We can just finish it out. Okay, call me back. <clears throat> Round up, trying to get Dave back on here. I'm working, trying to get him back on here. Let's see if we can get on with his cell phone. Let's see. That was crazy, right? The guy loaned the lender backed out at closing. Unbelievable. I'm reading the questions now, round up. Let's see what we have. Oh, that was a terrible one there. Buyer has uh the buyer was an investor in Jersey City. That's unusual. Jersey City's good strong market, usually. That is unbelievable.
Red Sox fan. A lot of money's being given out, but uh, who knows what the value of that money is? We got so much inflation. No, we don't. We just don't know. So the wife, the one wife is easier. Tenant is easy. <laughs> you got fifty tenants. The wife's easier. That could be true. Let's see. If we get Dave back on there. Round up as you wait for Dave. To get... Oh shoot! Get your questions in for Dave. It's knocked over something. Get your questions in for Dave. Y'all, we're waiting for my friend Dave to come back. Y'all, just hold tight. We'll see if we can get him back on the line. Hopefully, we will. This is weird. I don't know if Dave. Let me call him up. Sorry about this, guys. That was some good stuff, wasn't it? Hello? Dave. Yeah, I'm getting in now. I'm going through my uh, cell phone, but it keeps short time. It didn't work there either, but there you go. Okay, bye. Right. Okay, almost got him, y'all. Almost got him. Are you guys using solid state drives too? Solid state. There we go. Dave. Hey, how are you? Yeah, Sorry I've been here. That. Dancing, trying know. to count. <laughs> I don't know what happened. We, we were doing well and just cut off. It happens. Let's get some Q&A, Dave. we got a million questions for you, brother. You got time? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Somebody said they had a deal. The attorney disappeared, Dave, in Jersey wow. City. Uh, she said wow. the, the the buyer, the buyer and the attorney disappeared. It was probably the buyer and the attorney just didn't show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's not yeah. much you could. I mean, the buyers. I mean, just like the investor on that uh, deal we were talking about. Um, just like the bank, the lender, uh, you know, got a little scared of the deal. Yeah. It's on the buyers themselves. That's the reason I was saying that um, the buyer should probably thank the lender for walking away from it. <laughs> yeah, you got to trust them. They're putting up the money. Yeah, well, I mean, they, and most of the times I would say they've probably been doing this for some time to know that the uh, deal probably might not work out. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Oh, two trillion. Dave, Alexis Portlock. Dave, do you buy lots? Do you buy land lots? Oh, yeah, we love land. Uh, we, we, I mean, we're pretty much every aspect of real estate. Uh, at one point or another, we probably own 2,000 lots. Uh, right now, we own a lot less. We own a lot less than that. But long-term investment, uh, they work out well. Mm -hmm. so Are we you in the buy land? Are, are you in the market, Dave? Like, do you have stocks and all that? I am uh, a little bit into the market, uh, especially now. You know, I'm buying on the dips. You know, gotcha. every thousand or fifteen thousand down, I buy. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, really, trying to keep it to tech stocks. But uh, listen, gotcha. that's not that's not. I'm not a stock guy, so I really can't give much input on that. But, Just curious. Uh, I mean, most of my real estate guys, my real estate homies, they don't have, they don't do too much in the market. That's all I. Well, I, I have some investment money in there, but I also uh, been buying some personal funds as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, who these are? Let's see. You do buy land, Edward. Hey, Edward, can you give an example of terms for a hard money lender? Dave, <clears throat> that, that's a that's a tough one. I mean, that's that's one of the things that is all based on individualities of uh, each project, um, and what it looks like, where it is, what's the ARV, what's the purchase. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of equations that go into the purchase. But if they'd like to give us a call, we might be able to discuss uh, the particular okay. project. I think what's the best way to reach you? Is it social media, uh, Dave, or what? 
What? Uh, yeah, you can go to our website, usalandventures.com. Uh, you can also there? give. Uh, it's probably on there it my, is. usalandventures.com. usalandventures.com. Uh, you can call myself or my partner, who is my brother, Dan, who you're probably more familiar with. Uh, my number is 347-386-7097. Actually, that's Dan's number. I'm used to saying that more than I do my own phone number. <laughs> That's terrible. Dragon, is there any way to make the lender loan the money, Dan? Dave, let yeah, me call you Dan now. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's like, you know, when you try to force someone to do something, it's going to cost you money to do that. And if they're the lender, they probably have more money to force you not to do it. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, you can almost do anything you want in the United States of America as long as you have the money to back it up. Yeah, the money to back it up. You daggone right. <laughs> uh, I see uh, everybody shutting down schools. Let's see, dudes. What else we got here? Is there any way, I guess the same question, is there any way to make them so they can't back out of the deal? You know, I had a closing Friday, day. And Lord, I did a lot of praying. Did a lot oh, of praying. Really? It closed. I, actually, I saw the video on that. You were talking about it. There are there are deals that are closing. It's not that they're not closing. Um, I think it's more the private money lenders that are, you know, because they're in it for a lot more, and mm -hmm. it's a lot riskier for them, as mm -hmm. opposed to the uh, regular lenders, national yeah. lenders. So gotcha. um gotcha. I think I think in that aspect it's it's you know I mean I know a lot of people that are closing deals, but I also know some that aren't. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Jessica had one the the lender the lender wouldn't loan the money because the buyers had got a letter from his job. He didn't know if he was gonna be employed in three months up there in New York. So So FHA came out with a couple uh new regulations that they're working with. Um, whereas they're not doing the 24 hour call. I think previously it was like a 10 day call, a three day call and a 24 hour call mm -hmm. on a job. Uh, but they're not doing that. What they're really predominantly looking for is that the person will remain on the job in the future, yeah. although they're not working right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's I think tough. that's what more of what they're in line of what they're looking for right now. Dominic, Hey, when a property needs a lot of work, 30 to thousand rehab. Dominic, that's really that's that's a small job, my brother. <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I wish a house. When was the last time you did third twenty five? I haven't done the twenty five in shit, ten years. I don't know, Dave. Uh, I, you know, as you're saying it, I'm thinking it. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, in, in Florida, we we buy some smaller condos that mm -hmm. are you know one bedroom type stuff. One bedroom stuff, you know, we're in and out of it for twenty five thousand, you know, twenty thousand. Yeah. It's and that's like we're talking seven hundred fifty square feet. <laughs> Good gracious! So, so like these bigger homes that are in New York and New Jersey that we buy, I mean, you're talking hundred fifty thousand dollars just to step yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. He wants another air of these one twenty. The seller owes eighty six. Loan is eight fifty and the rent rate is twelve hundred. Does this make sense to subject two? I'll let Dave answer that one. Do you do such? Give me the number. Give me the numbers again. He's uh, it needs thirty in rehab. Oh, the, the pad. I got a pad for you too, Dave. I got a millionaire. <laughs> Did I show you the pad we're gonna be giving you? No, let me see it. Let me get hold tight. That's over here. Hey, you can read the numbers on the screen. Be right back, round up. I just wanted to get this book, Dave. Matter of fact, Dave, you were one of the inspirations creating the Millionaire Playbook. <laughs> That's right. Be... We talked about that a while back. So, uh, you, when I was oh, talking I to you, I definitely want Dave, one of those. <laughs> yeah, you could get a free one, but it's got all your stuff, the different sections for you to write your stuff in. Uh, perfect. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, Dave. Um, I mean, I'm I'm looking at the numbers here. If you say you're into it for 86, your rehab's 30, it's 116, your ARV is 120. 
really depends on what you want to do with it. If you're going to buy it to rent it, understand that you're buying a house at market value because you're 116,000 on an ARV of 120. Mm-hmm. It really depends on what you want to do. You're not going to flip it. There's no, no money way to flip it. Mm-hmm. But if he buys <laughs> you know, it, look- too, he's in it for no- he's not putting up any money to buy it though. Right. So in that, it's a, in that, yeah. But even if you flip it, there's no money. If your ARV is 120 and you're into it for 30. Which puts you at say one fifteen to say yeah, one ten. Yeah, There's yeah. no money to flip it, uh, mm-hmm. so I would I would look at that as a as a personal investment as a rental. I'm gonna take if, you're, if you're into it for no money, I think you're you're good. Yeah, no money, right? If but well, if yeah. you're a renter, he's gonna have to do the work though, Dave. Well, he's gonna have to do the work, absolutely. But he's gonna you know he's gonna have the uh, the revenue, the asset, yeah. Dominic, what I would what I would do, what I have done several times, do what I call an ugly lease option. I buy it, owner finance it, or, or lease option it out to another investor. Like Dave wouldn't do this deal because he's got his own financing. But there are a lot of investors. I think you had a guy a few weeks, a few months back, Dave. You were thinking about financing another another contractor. We if were. I bought this and financed another investor. See, investors are always looking for financing too. So what I would do is I would buy it and then the lease option that or own and finance it to another investor and get I'd have to lower the rent, but I still am getting cash flow with nothing out of my pocket. <laughs> so is, is is what you're looking for, then that's that's the deal to look to look at. Yep, cash flow. Only way to do yeah. that. Mary Jane, hey Dave, do you know what's happening with REITs these days? I, I don't have any idea. Oh, uh, with REITs? Uh to be honest with you, I don't really play too much in the field of REITs. Um, yeah. We've been approached multiple times to create REITs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of liability factors behind it, and we decided not to get into that. Gotcha. Keisha, round up, get your questions in for Dave Barrero, real estate investor since 1989, surviving. How many down cycles have you survived, Dave? Oh, <laughs> three. <laughs> Four? Admirable, Dave. I mean, you're a big deal. You know, forget it. Well, forget what they say at home, Dave. You're a big deal. <laughs> forget everybody in the house. Well, it's funny. I, I, I say that a lot to my wife too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Yeah, I let you. I get you. I let you get away with a lot that I won't let anyone else get away with. <laughs> Keisha, what's the best way to start, Dave, in your opinion? Do you recommend refinancing the home right now? Well, man, I'd like to know your opinion. Oh, that's, that is, uh, well, the refinancing at the rate that we have right now is uh, somewhat of almost free money. Uh, so if you, have the, if you have the ability to do so and you know what you're going to do with the money, then I think that's, that's a viable option. If that's a big if, though, Dave. If, if, uh, you know, discipline is the biggest thing accountability, discipline. Um, if you're, if you're disciplined enough to do it and you're willing to hold yourself accountable to do it, uh, sensibly, I think it's an option. Let me, let me, let me ask you, Dave. I want to take what you said and modify it a little bit and want to know what your opinion is. What would, what if I would ask you when you become disciplined enough to know what to do with the money? What would you say to that? When when do you know you are disciplined enough? No, I heard you say if you're disciplined, but I want to ask you. I want to modify that statement to say when you become disciplined. Oh, when you yes yes. That's I don't a good know. Point. I agree go ahead. That. You can go with that, Dave. I want to know what you want to say that, about that's, that. That's 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 a that's a very good point. Um, a lot of people think they're disciplined. A lot of people think they know more than they know, um, but to be able to hold yourself accountable to know when you are and when you are not, I think that's that's a very good that's a very good point. You guys know some things. I'm not really. I use my self directed Roth IRA to hold myself accountable, right? Because I know I can't touch it. That money is just for investment only, and I'm thinking about Keisha. Right. When I read, let me tell you about my first refinance, Dave. Spent the money, shit was gone. I'm back to square one. All right. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been there. I don't. I, I don't know. Oh, we all we all have. I mean, anyone that is at the levels we're at and said that uh, they've never failed, or you know, part of the plan of winning is is, is looking at the failures as well. 
Gotcha. So Keisha, yeah, I would say when you, if you are, Dave says if, we both say when you become this, like for now, I can take, like, I get checks from closings, Dave. I don't even, I don't even cash them. People, the, the attorney's calling me like, you got a check for 150000 why don't you cash it? You know, I'm like, I don't even want to cash it, because, you know, because it's like you're, you're putting that money in play. <clears throat> no, absolutely. I agree with that. I mean, it's part of what we were talking about before. You, you get a, you get a nice big check and. It's almost, it almost creates another problem for us, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's, it's, now that I have it, what am I going to do with it? What are you, you know? going to do with it? Can't spend it's, it. We're not going to spend it. I mean, we're going to spend it. We're not going to spend it on, you know, investing it. Foolish things. You know, it's got to be spent on another investment. Invest because you know, that's the ve that's that's the ve the vehicle for us. Let me ask you, David. Your mind when you get just think I'm just going to categorize. Just say one dollar, right? This a dollar is the is the the symbol when you get that does your mind automatically look at that and say i know i'm going to invest a portion of this before i start spending you know um it's funny you asked that question i was just thinking about it i i i, I don't even think about spending i think about uh investing you know like i spend what i have to spend i have to eat i have to clothe my family, you know, uh, food and cars and insurance. Like that's my spending. I don't, it's very rare that I actually, I don't really have the time to just go and spend money either. <laughs> yeah. So not having the time actually helps me to save. Cool. But I don't actually think about, I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna spend this. Everything goes into saving and I only spend what I have to. I love it. I love it. See, Dave, my thing is the, the, what you are is I, I feel like I'm the same cloth, but I want my roundupers to know that I took me a long time to become this person, Dave, you know, before I was oh, able to. Yeah. How about you? It, I mean, it just doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you know, you it's it's almost like walking. You don't remember walking. So I, when people say, when did you start? I don't remember. Wow. You that know, it's a sharp analogy. Right. It's I don't remember when I started. I just know that this is the way I think. This is just it's just normal to me. Is everybody now I was, you know, in the book, uh, I forget the what is the name of The Millionaire Next Door. He's talking about this three relationships that will help you be wealthy. Wealthy parents. I'm sorry, uh frugal parents, your frugal or your wife frugal. For so for me, I have parents and I'm frugal. But my wife ain't frugal. So oh. <laughs> how is it for you? My wife, my no, my wife is frugal. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you got oh, yeah. you got all three oh, then. Yeah. You got your parents. I, I I I got lucky because I have my parents wow. that you know we owe a lot to, if not all to, you know, and them showing us the path. Okay. But you know, there's also a lot of people that get shown the path that walk a different path. Right? That's true. So yeah. you have to also give yourself some gratitude for being enabling yourself to take the right path. Um, and then I have, you know, my wife is pretty frugal. You know, if there's a sale, she'll buy it. If not, she'll wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's, it, but again, it's not. I I don't know. Even when it comes down to buying a pack of gum, I was talking to my friend about this the other day. It, if the pack of gum is a dollar twenty-five or a dollar fifty, I'll probably still buy it. But I'll know what I paid for it, and I'll know that I could have got it for twenty-five cents less. <laughs> it's just <laughs> but, like I it was sitting around. And I think it was I think it was a, a a curtain or something he bought. He was with his wife, and I asked him, "What would you pay for?" He goes, "Like I don't know." Like how do you not know? Like I know I know how much I know what it cost. You Whether it's know. a ten dollar item or a hundred thousand dollar item, I know what that item cost me. You gotta know. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta know. know your numbers. You, you don't know your know. numbers. You don't know your business. <laughs> I love it, Dave. I enjoy talking. Uh, Dragon wants to know: Are you a hard money lender, Dave? Uh, we are starting to get into that uh, I've been, somewhat. I've been trying to convince him, y'all. I've been trying to convince. <laughs> him. Speaking of Chris, uh, we we are we are. Uh, Looking into it, and uh, we, we're looking to do some of that, yes. Gotcha. All right. KB Bundles, are the mortgage rates locked in prior to closing if there isn't anything explicitly stated in, write, stated in writing, Dave? Uh, 
are the mortgage rates locked into? I can't see that. I'm not looking on my phone, but uh, oh, the mortgage rates, rates locked, into locked in prior to closing. Are you talking about hard money rates? Or are you talking about just regular rates? I'm talking about uh, let's go. Let's go ahead and say a regular owner occupied deal day. Oh yeah, regular owner occupied deal. Yeah, you lock in the rate. It's called locking it in. Gotcha. Um, I, I actually have a friend of mine that just called me today. He has a VA loan, and he locked in at 275 like two and a half weeks ago when the rates were really extremely low free money he had he's completely free um so he was he's literally saving 800 dollars a month on his mortgage nice and he went away to uh georgia um to a house that he has in georgia for the coronavirus thing and he's he asked me he's like well they're saying well i'm gonna lose the rate if i don't close this and i'm like yeah you will <laughs> You're locked in, but you're not locked in forever. So, what I think, but I think what you're talking about is locking in a rate. But absolutely, nice. Uh, uh, Dave, J Jed, hey Jed, Dave, what is the best way to make very low offers? Oh, I mean, everything is. You have to know your study your your opponent. <laughs> you know, know who they are, know what they need, know the reason for their sale, um, and. Again, be compassionate, try to get the best deal, but too much of a low ball deal with, uh, will probably create animosity within the relationship of trying to negotiate. So be reasonable at the same time. Reasonable offer, yeah. There was a saying I learned a while ago, fat pigs get sent to the slaughterhouse and medium-sized pigs continue to get fed. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Jed. KB Bundles. Chris, can you add a cash app to the description? Okay, you want to join my YouTube? Uh, yes, I'll put that in. I can't obviously do it now, but I'll, I'll put that in later today. Ronell, are you familiar with Velocity Baking, Dave? And what do you think? Is that is that a good strategy? Velocity Baking. I'm going to say I am not. Yeah, I need to change it. I'm sorry. I got. I'll, I'll add my cash app on that, y'all. These millennials with this damn cash app, I can't stand it, man. <laughs> How do you track this stuff, right, Dave? What are you doing, man? Oh well, you gotta get someone to work that really understands that. Uh, Dave, Joe, Jay, hey, Dave, do you have any strategies to buying homes at the foreclosure auction? My favorite. Uh. I mean, it's probably the same strategies everyone else has, but I, I mean, as far as what, as far as from the beginning to end, going to look at the property, getting into the properties, figuring out ways to get in that other people are unaccustomed to. Uh, you know, a lot of these, that's a very broad question. <laughs> yeah, so much. I would yeah. say make sure you do your title search, right? I mean, you got to have your title. Don't do nothing well, to you. Uh, if you have a, absolutely. I mean, you work with a title company that you work with uh, all the time. Predominantly, they're going to do those searches without a charge or a very minimal charge. There you go. Um, yeah, that's that's where you want to start. I mean, that's just the, that's the beginning. You know, I, I'll drive by the property. Uh, a lot of times, you say you can't go in, but you, a lot of times you find ways to get in as well. Um, yeah. You really check it out. Uh, a lot of times, they're also occupied, so you really you don't want to disturb any of, of those occupants. Yeah. Um, but familiarize yourself with the community, the property, the location. Um, and then next step uh, would be the title company. Uh, start from there. You don't want to be getting into secondary uh, loans and third parties and everyone else done. that's uh, got their hands in the piggy bank. You're done. You ever, you ever yes. gotten one of those days, a bad, a bad foreclosure buying a second? Uh, honestly, we have not, but we do uh, – due diligence uh, beyond many what many people do. Uh, uh, my brother is awesome at that. <laughs> I'm, sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Let's see. I think that's all we got, Dave. Uh, fastest way to share. I think I have the very uh, fastest. Oh, real estate. Randy, what is the fastest way to do a title? Well, he says, I guess, a check to do a title search, I would guess. Yeah, absolutely. From, you know, create a real, I mean, Building relationships, we talk about it all the time. I mean, you build a relationship with a title company, utilize that title company on every deal you do. Um, therefore, they want to help you as much as you're helping them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, let them know you're going to use them. 
Uh, I mean, now is a great time to be just be stay on the phone and build relationships. Yep. Every, that's if you're not building relationships right now, I don't know what you're doing. That's right. Um, and that's this is this is the time to do it. Everybody's home. You know, we're busy. We're on the phone, but you know, we will make time to to build relationships with people. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things you should do with the title company. You know, if you don't have a title company, call them up. Ask them how do you build a relationship with them. Emphasize what you're looking to do, what you want to get into, and how you can work together. Also, you might want to, you know, add in that uh, you also have other people that are in the business with you uh, that also do the same thing that you'd like to recommend to them as well. Mm-hmm. Roundup, thanks for asking the questions. We've got a few more. Uh, make sure you get your questions in the video description. Uh, J- CB, Dan, do you buy land in Puerto Rico? Uh, we have we have important land. We have purchased some structures uh, in Puerto Rico. Um, that was probably three years ago. So we're still, um, yeah, we're, we we it's kind of that's a that's a long term investment. It's basically what we call park money. Gotcha. I guess especially now since the economy is has it has it picked up down there yet, Dan? I don't know. Uh, well, you know, when we get hit here soft, they get hit there 10 times as hard. Gotcha. So uh, that is really just, um, it's a gamble shot. But mm-hmm. if, you're ha- if you're willing to let- park it for 20 years, you'll be fine. You know, it could be 10, could be 20, could be five. We don't know. But it's really very unpredictable. Gotcha. Jed, Dave, is, if the virus continues at the current rate... <clears throat> How much do you foresee the real estate market going down, being that you've been doing this since '89? Uh, I don't, I don't see us going down the way we went down in 2008 and '9. Um, How so? Well, I mean, we, we the, the the market in 2008-9 was a crash of fake money. Um, it was that the market had all bank money. It is real money. There's a lot of sideline money right now. Yeah. Um, and there's real value into the homes. The the mortgage the mortgages that have been given were given to real people that can really afford them. Mm-hmm. What was unpredictable is that uh, we're going to have you know three and a half million people out of jobs. Uh, but I think that's temporary. But you know again, this is a complete moving target, and and you know uh, from a day to day basis, everything is changing. So that's a that's a that's a tough question to. To be able to predict that it really starts with how many debts we're going to have and everything else, it's it's yeah. tough. But it, it, the the market eva- inevitably will be affected. Yeah. How much? That's to be determined. TB, TBD. That's a rough one. I can't stand to be determined, brother. That's rough running a business. Yeah, that's, that's why this is one of those you just kind of I say, let's let some of the dust settle first, and then we start to figure out if we want to, you know, where we want to go, at what angle. Listen I can to tell you that if you have any opportunity to save, start saving because there's going to be huge opportunities arriving. I hope you guys are listening to this man. I mean, when he talks, he, I mean, just the spirit that he's given. I haven't seen this dude. It's, you've been smooth ever since I met you. <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying the words you use, brother. I mean, you're very descriptive. Uh, you're very, when it comes to analyzing what you got, you're not, you're not jumping to conclusion. You're saying, okay, well, let me, t- man, let me think about this. Well, it all depends on that. I think you're analytical with what you're, th- what you're talking about and seeing this whole market from such a long angle, wide angle, I would say, gives you a better perspective. You know, th- I guess more uh, a better perspective than the average investor. That's all I would, that. I would say that. Okay, I appreciate that. I mean, it's really just analyzing past trends, right? I mean, if the best way to figure out what's going to happen is to kind of analyze where, what has happened in the past to gauge yourself better. Gotcha. All right, Roundup, that's all I got. Make sure you get registered up. I'll see you tomorrow at 4.30. Well, matter of fact, I got a lender coming on later today. I'm going to tell you about what programs are being cut, how they're changing lending guidelines. And that's all. Anything else you want to add for a Roundup viewers before you get out of here, Dave? Um, that's it. I just want to say thank you. I appreciate the opportunity coming out and uh, – uh, letting you guys know what I'm thinking. And if you have any questions, again, always feel free to give myself and my brother Dan a call. We're always open to discussion and uh, helping. Yep, sounds good. Okay, everybody, I'll see you soon. Make sure you hit that bell, right, subscribe, guys. like the content. Yeah, hit the, hit the bell so you know when I have my next guest on. 
All right. Everybody. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take care. Bye-bye.